Hey guys, welcome back to another Call of Duty Modern Warfare video and in today's video we will be covering the major patch that was released on Friday, November the 8th and all the particulars in it that the community had been asking Infinity Ward, the developers, to consider and take a look at and I have to admit that it is interesting to see how quickly Infinity Ward responded to all the feedback. Before we get started guys, I would like to welcome all of the Call of Duty Modern Warfare members in the community that are visiting the channel for the very first time. I would encourage you guys, if you would, to click on that watermark down there in the bottom right hand corner to subscribe, along with taking advantage of that like button which is just below it, as your guys' participation here on the channel is very much appreciated. And for all those following on BitChute, BitChute, the alternative video hosting site, I encourage all you guys to give me a follow if you're watching me on there as well. Along with the update notes, we also have several new free maps that have been included in this update to include Shoot House 24-7, which you see playing in the background, as well as the 32v32 Krovnik Farmland, which I was going to get video for, but I keep getting the pesky shaders constantly trying to load. I can pause the shaders and just continue to play the game, but sometimes it really creates more of a hiccup when trying to play ground where it really locks it up. And lastly, we have Hardpoint. So these are all included in this very large update patch note. I'm going to leave a link down in the published section if you guys want to read the patch notes point by point. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to simply go over some of the highlighted aspects of the update notes from Friday. The team has included some back-end fixes to prevent crashes and improve stability across all platforms, including some of the dev errors that people were experiencing and various performance fixes. Now granted, I am still having issues with the shaders always wanting to load. I've tried to address this in many different ways. I do see that it is a problem because I went to the Activision forums and saw that within the community it is a growing issue. So hopefully the development team can maybe address that in a future patch. They fixed the Simtech warning audio being heard at the same volume, whether in a building or outside. And it may be fair to say that they are working more on the ambient noise within the game and or ambient sound to include things like footsteps. So when they mention the term occlusion, what they mean is what something sounds like behind an object, for example, in the geometry or how a certain sound pattern is affected by objects within the game or assets. Sprint and tactical sprint speeds are now back to speeds that they were in beta. Now, I didn't even notice really the difference. When I come from Battlefield into Call of Duty, it's really quite a dramatic change as far as the behavior, dexterity, movement, and uh, agility of the character. So when I go from Battlefield into Call of Duty, Call of Duty, the characters just feel a little more encumbered, a little more sluggish. But um, with the changes that they most recently had in this patch, the soldiers are feeling a little bit more maneuverable. A fix for a bug that revealed players to UAVs when they fired their weapons, even if they had Ghost On and Silencer equipped. So apparently what was happening was, if you fired your weapon, it would deactivate Ghost. And so, uh, obviously, that was going to reveal your position, even if you had Ghost activated, as well as using a silencer. So, I'm sure plenty of players are grateful that that has been changed. A very significant issue that was corrected was a bug that revealed players to UAVs when they fired their weapon, even if they had Ghost and silencers equipped. The problem was that apparently Ghost was being deactivated when players fired, so I'm very encouraged by that being corrected. I have not unlocked the Riot Shield to take advantage of its unique properties, but the team did fix an issue where the throwing knife and thermite weren't causing the shield to go on the player's back when thrown. Of course, this gives them a very clear advantage. They also fixed an issue where explosive splash damage wasn't working consistently, and they will continue to tune the Riot Shield in future updates. A much anticipated change to the Claymores of Justice, as our good buddy Thunder would call them. The team says that detonating an enemy Claymore now with bullets is non-lethal when you have full health. They also reduce the trigger and damage radius, giving you a little bit more leeway, and also reduce the damage width to better match the trigger width. 
It's challenging enough to stay alive in Call of Duty, but having your character shout out enemy locations not only informs you of where an enemy is, but also allows the enemy to know where you are. So the team removed the ability for enemies to hear when they've been called out by the opposing team. They also adjusted the enemy callouts so they are never from your operator. Enemy callouts now use a more restricted cone at the hip and even more restricted in ADS when calculating whether or not to trigger. And the team will continue to monitor this and make additional tweaks to Battle Chatter in future updates. Not being heard by the enemy is nearly as important as being able to see the enemy. And the development team says here that they continue to do updates to the lighting so that player visibility in dark windows and dark areas is a little bit better. Now I go into my control panel for NVIDIA and I adjust the brightness before games. So I have found that to be rather helpful on my end. Probably one of the biggest concerns within the community was that of footsteps. And the team says here that they increase the occlusion percentage to filter footstep sounds behind geometry and adjusted the footstep volume at a distance. Now, when you watch the guys on their videos go over some of these post-patch, pre-patch, and so forth, you have to keep in mind here too that when they are doing that, it is in a private map where it is completely silent. And of course, in a live action map, you're gonna have all the ambient noise going on around you. But even within their testing, it does appear that the footfalls or footsteps aren't as pronounced as they used to be. And I'm sure the team will probably continue to adjust those. If you're like me and you like doing the daily challenges and or selected missions, it looks like they have corrected some of the updating when you completed some of those because on occasions we would see that either a challenge or a mission would reset after we've done all the work that was part of the challenge or the mission. So I have to say I'm very happy to see that that has been corrected. It doesn't take a first person shooter community very long to come across an all powerful, all encompassing, can do everything type of firearm like the 725 shotgun. And of course it doesn't remain a secret very long because once it is leaked out to the community, it is then spread throughout the forums as well as tons and tons of videos. But unless uh, the development team got wind of it, of course, and what they did was they increased the ADS and hip fire spread and also reduced its damage at range. Now, based upon some of the video testing I have seen, it's still very a very good weapon, of course, because it is a shotgun, but there has been some adjustments made to it. Along with it, and it's not so much of an innocuous weapon, the M4A1 assault rifle has had its damage range reduced and a small increase in its recoil. As a result of these two weapons pretty much being very ubiquitous within the community and being used quite often, the development team has decided to focus and buff the SMGs. And what they did was they increased the move speed, increased the ADS move speed, and reduced the sprint out time with the SMG. I like the SMGs, however, it was very challenging to go up against the M4A1 and of course the 725. Another weapon that I'm becoming fond of, and that's the PKM, and I'm kind of glad that it is not getting as much attention, I guess, within the community, although I see a lot of people using it from time to time, but it has gotten a little bit of a nerf, unfortunately, and what the team did was they increased the hip spread and medium damage range has been reduced, which is kind of disappointing, but I think I can still manage to use the weapon quite effectively despite those changes. Another thing that I am very encouraged about are changes to the pistols. The team increased move speed, reduced the sprint out time, and increased damage range. So that's very exciting, and I'll probably be using my 357 a little more often. An issue that didn't seem to be very much talked about, and that was crouch and prone having a bit of an issue with recoil now as a battlefield player we are accustomed to both crouching and going prone to improve accuracy of the firearm so in call of duty if you were crouched or prone there appeared to be some kind of issue with the recoil so i am very happy to see that this has been fixed one of the unique aspects to call of duty modern warfare is the introduction of ground war the 64 player game mode that expands on the unique style that Call of Duty is known for and one that I'm familiar with as a Battlefield player. 
I've had my sets of challenges playing in Ground War, but I am encouraged with changes and fixes that the development team is coming out with. Overall, the newest changes and fixes certainly illustrates that the team is listening to the community. If you want to read all the specific changes to Ground War along with the game overall, I have of course left a link to the patch notes down in the publish section. And that's going to wrap it up for the Call of Duty Modern Warfare patch notes for November the 8th. I would encourage you guys now to click on that channel icon appearing right there on the screen to subscribe along with notifications. That way you guys will have all the latest updates and releases from Call of Duty.